Hi, my name is Nan Chan, and today I'm going to be talking about disruptive disorder, specifically conduct and oppositional defiant disorder. So to start, disruptive disorder is an umbrella term that includes conduct and oppositional defiant disorder. They are both similar to each other because they involve behaviors that violate the rights of other and involve conflict with authorities. However, ODD does not include aggressive behaviors that are usually presented in individuals with CD, and individuals with CD do not have patterns of emotional dysregulation that are presented in individuals with ODD. When considering a diagnosis of conduct disorder, we are looking for behaviors that fall into the following four categories. Theft or deceitfulness, serious violation of rules, aggression towards people and animal, as well as destruction of property. For a diagnosis of ODD, we are looking for emotional and behavioral symptoms that have last at least six months, and they may include angry and irritable mood, argumentative and defiant behavior, as well as vindictiveness. So how can we support students with oppositional defiant disorder and conduct? We can start by establishing a positive behavior intervention and support, also known as PBIS. Research has shown that students with ODD and ZD can benefit from the PBIS programs as it provides structures for students and team members. PBIS is a tier system with three different levels. Tier one is the universal level that provides supports for all students. For example, schools can establish a behavior management system for school-wide implementation. In the classroom, teachers can incorporate behavior management techniques such as the good behavior game to motivate students to be on their best behavior. Tier two is designed to target students who are at risk for problem behaviors. For example, schools can incorporate social skills training, Teachers and mental health professionals can do check-in, check-out. Coping Power and Stacking Steps are programs that target problematic behaviors by teaching more appropriate behaviors and coping skills. Lastly, if students continue to struggle even after receiving Tier 2 support, they'll move up to Tier 3, and some of the interventions there include functional behavior assessment, creating and implementing a behavior plan, and referring the student to an outside therapist that specializes in problem behavior and maintaining a daily progress monitoring system. At the end of our one pager, we also included some resources for you all. I hope you found this video to be informative. Thank you for watching.